following amendment, the clerk read the amendment. Amendment by Thompson and Harris. Chair for Nazareth, Representative Thompson. Mr. Speaker, Mr. King, for a purpose. Just a quick parliamentary inquiry. Just state your inquiry. Just to help us understand how the amendment process is going to go. Are we following the normal process where they'll just take the amendments up in the order that there would affect the bill going from page one through the end? Mr. King, laying out the amendments in the way we believe they're supposed to be laid out. I don't doubt that. I'm just trying to make sure we can anticipate. Mr. King, the next amendment after this is by Representative Sarah Davis Harris. The following one by Representative Turner of Harris. Menendez. Mr. Turner again. Mr. Menendez again. Mr. Herrero. Are, are those following the bill in the bill order? In other words, Section 1 amendments and then Section 2 amendments? The chair is not aware, but there's stacked right here if you want to come take a look. We'll do that. We'll be happy to try to put them in order for you. And we're still allowing bills, amendments to be filed, so if we get to the end of the bill, someone can still file an amendment that affects Section 1 of the bill. There's no no King, uh, members are still filing amendments. All right, thank you. Chair, that's Representative Thompson. Mr. Speaker and members, this amendment that I'm offering would allow for an exemption to the prohibition of abortion over 20 weeks in the case of rape and incest. I don't believe that there are any pro-rapists or pro-incest members of this body. I feel very resolute about that position. But I want to tell you that one of the hardest decisions in the world for a young woman to make is to go and tell somebody that her stepfather or her father uncle has raped her and she's pregnant. I don't think that you want to traumatize this young woman by making her carry a child that her stepfather has impregnated her with, or her father, who not only would be the grandfather but the daddy of the child as well. Let me just give you a little bit of my experience. And that experience is this. There was a young lady in Harris County that was being consistently raped by her daddy. And she begged her father to stop having anal sex with her because it was so painful and it hurt her so badly. And she was afraid because he had threatened her not to ever tell anybody about what was happening to her. As a result of that, she finally got enough nerve up to be able to tell somebody and he was finally convicted. But what about all those other persons who don't ever get those kind of nerves to tell somebody, my daddy has raped me and I'm pregnant? What about those other times when they are afraid to say that my stepfather has raped me and I'm pregnant. Don't you think that those persons have been violently violated? And don't you think that they deserve a right to have a choice, a choice to determine whether or not 
that they want to be traumatized for the rest of their lives. Let me just tell you this. I have a grandson, and I've had a grandson, only one grandchild for many years. And my child came to me and told me that she wanted to have an abortion. And I sat down with her. I talked to her. I went over the reasons with her because the choice was hers. That grandchild is 30 years old, and I have a great-grandchild as a result of that. But I would not have denied her the choice had she wanted to choose to abort that child. Mr. Speaker? Mr. Duke, for our purpose. Will the general lady yield? Thompson, do you yield? I'll yield. Thank you. Representative Thompson. Yes. Are you aware that most, just about anyone who has been through the horrific act of rape and incest is too embarrassed, usually feeling a level of guilt without cause, but a level of guilt to even come forward when immediately when it has occurred. That's true. And I've known some situations in many communities, several communities, where the children were born retarded because of incest, deformed because of incest, and the mother went through shame, and some of them even had a mental lapse that lasted them for the rest of their lives, where they had to not only be treated mentally, but they had to use psychotropic drugs in order to be able to get through a daily life until their demise. And Representative Thompson, are you aware that uh, most of them go through a level of denial for a very long period of time, a denial that the act of rape or incest um, occurred, or even the fact that they may potentially be pregnant from this act? Absolutely. So are you aware that as a result, it may be you know, 20 weeks, 24 weeks before they, they come forward because they cannot hide the fact that they are pregnant from this? Absolutely correct. And are you aware that less than 2% of all abortions that occur, occur after a 20-week time period? I am. And, you know, are you familiar with the debate that was on Senate Bill 5 when we talked about rape and the author of this bill stated that a individual could, a woman who was raped could go to the hospital and the hospital had something that was called a rape kit. I am familiar with that. Do you know what is in a rape kit? A rape kit is a, a kit which is secure forensic evidence to be used to punish or uh, to prosecute the rapist if that rapist is found. But the author of this bill stated that a rape kit was used to clean the woman out and that they could get a B and C and potentially a uh, morning after pill. A rape kit is used for forensic evidence. Do you know what a rape kit looks like? Yes, I do. Do you see anything in these envelopes that would potentially allow for cleaning a woman out? Not at all. Do you see any RU486 in no. these envelopes for collection I do of not. information? I do not. Do you see any tools that are used for a DNC? I do not. Are you aware that when a woman goes to a hospital uh, after a rape and there's just these things for evidence that an abortion is, even, is not even discussed with the woman? I am. Thank you. Mr. Perry, for what purpose? Question for the gentlelady. Ms. Thompson, do you yield? I yield to my colleague. How are you doing, ma'am? Uh, your amendment, if I'm reading it correctly, exempts all issues regarding up to the last day of the birth. In other words, you could have an abortion if it was due to rape or incest up to the day before the child was birthed. Is that it, correct? It passes the 20-month, uh, um, 20 20-week period, and it also is the same amendment, Representative Perry, that you voted for on the sonogram bill. This is the exact language that's taken out of the sonogram bill that was passed 
last session, 2011, that you voted I for, with this language in it. And what I did was I lifted this very language out of the sonogram bill that you voted for, and I'm putting it in, I would like to put it in this House bill too, the very same language that you approved under the sonogram bill. I, I, this is that language. I hear you. Um, Thank you. Does the bill HB2 allow for abortions up to 20 weeks? The bill does not allow for this abortion for incest and rape after 20 weeks. After because 20. sometimes, for 20 weeks uh, afterwards, because sometimes it takes a little longer for this information to surface. But again, you voted for this language under the sonogram bill that was carried by Representative Sid Miller last session of the legislature. Okay. The, the, the issue with the sonogram bill was for a scan only of the baby at the time to have a picture so that the mom would be more informed about having an abortion. What you're saying under your amendment and what you're trying to propose is that it would be following through on the abortion. But, so when I voted for that through the sonogram, that was so that the individual uh, involved in that decision making, the woman involved in that, would be more informed and have the right and the option to know with that information to be able to not have the abortion. Stephen, raise your point of order. Thank Please you. Please not point of order. Well taken, sustained. Mr. Speaker, I move to extend time on this very important amendment that my colleagues voted for last session of legislature, and I wanted them to have the opportunity, particularly our new colleagues, to be able to become more familiar with this uh, amendment. Members, you heard the motion to object. The chair is none to order. Mr. Speaker. For what purpose? Will the general lady yield? I Thompson yield. Yields, lady yields. Thank you, Mrs. Thompson. And, um, with your amendment, or without your amendment, I should say, do you believe that an undue burden will be placed on women by not having this particular amendment on this bill? I do, because a lot of times girls would not come forward because they don't want to, they don't want uh, their father to go to jail or go to prison and they may not, in fact, uh, tell who is the perpetrator of that very violent act. And what I don't want to do is, I don't want to force those young women or any woman, because you know what? When a person is raped, when a woman is raped, they don't go and see whether or not it's a Republican woman or a Democratic woman or an independent woman. The rapist just raped a woman. She raped the woman. And and and, 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 and I don't want to force them to have to use a court hanger for a back alley or to use a knitting needle or use a feather or take turpentine. I want to make sure that the law allows them that option, whether they want to take it or not, it gives them the choice. And, and constitutionally, right now, we do have a choice, do we not? We do have a choice right now. Now, along the lines of an undue burden, say a, someone coming from far west Texas or someone coming from the Rio Grande Valley, it would place an undue burden with, how, with this particular uh, house bill if it were to pass for women, um, if, if these particular clinics, although the House author believes that, that clinics would not shut down, the financial reality is most of these clinics would not afford to, to stay open. Is, is that not the case? That is the case. And so there's a financial burden that is placed on these women that would have to drive, in some cases, uh, 1,200 miles round trip to, to seek uh, medical attention if, if they need to seek this medical attention, correct? Absolutely, and in many places there is not even transportation where they can access it. Correct. And so, um, you know, with, with the, the history of, of women that have gone through rape and incest, can you talk a little bit about maybe some of the psychological mind frame that, that some of these women have unfortunately gone through and why it's so difficult for them to come forward in, in these particular cases and why it may take them more than five months to make a decision on why they may, may want to go through a procedure like this? If you've been bullied by the rapist like your stepfather or your father 
or your uncle and, and bully it to the point of not telling it, that is a very big psychological effect. And so it may take a woman longer in some cases to come forward um, in, in these particular instances, would it not? If at all. That's correct. And we've heard testimony from both sides, from women who have been raped and have chosen to, to seek an abortion, and women who have been raped and have, have not chosen to seek an abortion. But in both cases, they have had a choice in what they have decided to do, correct? And I just don't want that choice to be a knitting needle. I don't want that choice to be a feather. I don't want that choice to be a bottle of turpentine, and I don't want that choice to be a coat hanger. Because the end goal is not about reducing um, unhealthy abortions. The end goal is about keeping women healthy, correct? Absolutely. And you know what the unusual thing? I don't know why there is such a concern about the inability for us to be able to think for ourselves. We were these men's first teachers. We taught them how to put their pants on, how to tie their shoes, how to potty. We cleaned them. We taught, we potty trained them, taught them how to go to the toilet, how to eat, how to, how to go to school and learn. And all of a sudden, when we get to be adults, then we become senile to the extent that we don't know what is good for ourselves. We cannot make decisions about ourselves. Like, we can't think ourselves out of a paper bag, and we can. Now, is there really a distinction between this amendment and the sonogram amendment that you have? The same language that these individuals who came back this session voted for last session. The exact same language. And I, I agree with you that no one in this House chamber would say that they are pro-incest or pro-rape, correct? I don't believe there's a pro-incest person in this chamber. And I don't believe there's a pro-rapist person in this chamber. And I don't believe that they want to let young girls be raped by their stepfathers, their fathers, or their uncles. I don't Thank believe you. that. Nor do I believe that they have, that they would want their constituents to resort to a knitting needle, a feather, turpentine, or a coat hanger in the back alley where there are illegal abortions reform, and then we have death on our hands. Nor do we want to place an undue burden on these, on these sometimes socioeconomically challenged women, correct? I do not want to place those undue burdens. Thank you very much, Mr. Thompson. Mr. Senator, for the yield for I the yield to my Ms. colleague. Thompson, how are you doing? I'm great. Uh, just a couple of questions, uh, and following up on Representative Perry's question, that your amendment would extend the ability in the cases of rape and incest for a woman to choose an abortion beyond 20 weeks. Is that correct? If that was necessary. If it was necessary. And necessary would be if she chose to. Is that correct? At least she had the choice. But you, okay, and that's, that's all I'm saying. And so is there a limit on that, or would, would you allow this to happen even up to the 38th, 39th week? No. Uh, it's her choice. So her choice is so at any time before the baby's born, she can have that. That's what you're saying in this amendment? The federal law says 24 weeks. Are you going to opt, are you going to say we're going to knock the federal law out and put our own? I'm asking you 30. if that's what you're trying to do here, ma'am. I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm just, I'm just, I didn't say in now here, so I'm just asking. You're saying within the guidelines of the 24 weeks of the federal law. Okay, so you're saying after 20 weeks, though, but before 24 weeks. Is that correct? Is that what this is saying? That's right. Would you take an amendment to your amendment to specifically say that? Oh, I, I certainly will. Okay, and then after 20 weeks, before 24 weeks, could you describe how an abortion is handled, how that works? Would you describe that to me as to how they go in there and they take that unborn baby and dismember that unborn baby? Would you describe exactly how that works? So I don't know. So I'm these members can know if they're going to vote on on this amendment? The only thing I can tell you is that they follow medical guidelines, and this is the only house that I'm familiar with that we have three... Uh, physicians who have gone to medical school, but a whole lot of other physicians on the floor who have never had medical training, who are experts on uh, women um, uh, choices, who are experts on what happens to women, who are experts what happens to women, and uh, I would be happy to accept your amendment on the one condition that you vote for it. And, I, and I'm not saying that. You, you don't think I was saying I was an expert, and I'm not saying you're an expert oh, no. either, right? No, oh, no. Oh, I'm, I'm just I'm I asking say you're an expert. No, I just say there are so many experts in this in this room. I'm just asking. There are all question. kinds of experts, but they have never been to medical school, 
Right. And you know what? It's unusual. They're experts on women reproductive rights, and they're not experts in nothing else to any extent. And so that's what always so so heartbreaking. But, but, but Miss Thompson, you agree that people on this in this body can ask questions to try to learn. That's correct. I mean, you agree with that? That's the reason why I'm asking. That's the reason why I'm accepting your questions, yeah, and so I appreciate you so much. That, that's all. Because I, mean. I know that you know that you don't want to put your constituents back to the back alley of a knit needle to turpentine. Of a coat hanger. I want my constituents, just like you do, current and future, to have the best chance for life. That's what I want. Thank well, you. Don't you also want them to have it? We'll have order. We'll please have order in the gallery. Don't you want them also to have the best chance to have a choice? Because, even, because even God gives us a choice. To serve him or not to serve him. Mr. Callis, well, as a choice. Well, the gentlelady yields. I yield. Lady yields.